Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our class on basic charts. Tonight we'll be discussing how to use charts, how to read them, and what value they are, and what the different types of charts are that we should be looking at. Now, if you're this is the first webinar you're attending, ETX is a regulated provider, and therefore I'm required to give you a risk warning. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information is provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors, and we do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities we talk about tonight are for educational purposes only. And for those of you that are joining us through the internet tonight and aren't part of the ETX family, let me tell you a little bit about ETX. We're a fast-growing financial services company, and we are based in London. You can come by our offices and say hello if you wish. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, that's the Financial Conduct Authority, and we're also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. Now, when you trade with ETX, we have many different platforms. We offer everything from spread betting for those of you in the UK to CFD trading, Forex trading, and binary options trading. We also have many different platforms that you are welcome to trade on. Now, tonight we will be discussing charts. And charts are the basics or the beginnings of what's called technical analysis. Now, learning how to read a Forex chart is considered to be somewhat of a science. They look complicated at first glance. Charts can look drastically different depending on what options you use. Charts usually have settings for display styles of the price, the time frame you want to view, and different types of charts. Now, there are three different categories of charts, or three main categories of charts. And understanding charts, like I said, are the beginnings of your roadmap to success. Because all of the science of technical analysis is involved in visually seeing price patterns on charts or other things on charts, indicators and oscillators on charts. And so even understanding the basis of the charts will give you a good understanding of how an asset is moving. Because even though, no matter what style of trading you're using, whether you're using trading from the news, whether you're trading from economic events, whether you're trading from data that comes out. All of this might tell you which direction an asset might move, but none of this is going to tell you what levels, what price points are the important prices, where you expect that asset to go, where you should put your stop loss, where you should be have your take profit points, because all of this is about price movement and the price action, which can only be determined by looking at a chart. Now, charts typically have several different display modes for displaying price. And they come in three different patterns, so to speak. We have what are called bar charts, candlestick charts, and line charts. All the other charts, and there's a lot of all kinds of variations out there, are based on these three underlying charts. Now, the line chart is the most basic. It doesn't give you a great deal of information, but it gives you a vi good visual effect of how price is moving. And what you're looking at on your screen now is a line chart. It is a simple line put on a chart connecting prices. Now, what we're looking at right now is the Euro US dollar, which is not important for the moment, but we're looking at a 30 minute chart. 30 minutes is the time frame. And every 30 minutes, a dot is put on this chart for, and in most cases, a line chart is the close of the period of that 30 minutes, whatever the price is of that asset at that close of that 30 minute time frame. Now, some charts will allow you to pick the typical price, the average price. Some will let you take the open price, but the charts typically use the close of the 30-minute period. 
And at the close of each 30 minute period, a dot is put on that chart. And then a line is drawn connecting those price points together. So it gives you some representation of price, but it doesn't give you any great detail. You can't see how much that price has moved in that 30 minute period. You only see where it was at that one second of time. But it does give you a quick look at price in general. Now, the most well-known charts are called bar charts. And bar charts have been around for a very long time, and they give you a very good representation of price and price action. Because not only do you see the end of the period for every 30 minutes, and again, we're looking at a 30-minute chart right now, But each one of these lines tells you an entire movement of that price in that, uh, that time period. Plus, you can start to see some commonality in price movement. You can see strategical prices. You can see uptrends and downtrends. You can see how broad that movement was in that period. So it starts to give you a very good visual depiction of price movement. Now, each one of these bars on a chart give you four crucial pieces of information. They give you what's called the open, the high, the low, and the close for that time period. So in the example we're using, we're using a 30-minute chart. So for every 30 minutes, we put a bar on the chart. And what we do to draw this bar is at the beginning of that 30-minute period, we put a little dash to the left. And whatever price it is when that 30 minutes starts. At the close of that 30 minutes, or exactly 30 minutes later, we put a dash to the right. Very simple. If we're using a one-hour chart, we do the same thing at the beginning and the end of an hour. If we're doing using a one-day chart, we use the beginning of the day and the end of the day. If we're using a one-month chart, we use the open when the month started and the close when the month ended. Then we put a dot at the highest price that asset achieved in that time frame, so in this case, in that 30-minute time frame, and we put a dot at the lowest price level it reached in that 30-minute time frame, and then we draw a line together. And what we have is a bar that represents the open, the high, the low, and the close for that time period. But not only does it represent that, it also gives you a visual image of what is happening in the market for that asset. Now, if in this time frame you stepped up from when you drew the open to the close, if you climbed up the ladder, so to speak, it was a bullish movement. In other words, the bulls controlled the market during that segment. If you stepped down the ladder from the open to the close, that meant the bears controlled the market. So that starts telling you a story of what is happening in the price mar market for that asset and who is controlling the movement. And when you understand who's controlling the movement in that time frame, you can start not only understanding price action, you can start telling a story about that asset. So this chart, starts giving you a look at what is really happening in the market. Who's controlling the market? Who's dominating it? How strong they are? Because you can also start looking at the difference between the open and the close. Because when you look at this on the charts, you start seeing how wide the variations are. You start seeing how much, much the asset moved in that period. And you can start to see who was controlling. Because remember, price action is all about a tug of war. And you can almost see the tug of war going on in each one of these bars. Who's controlling it? Who's pulling it over the edge? Who's pulling it back? And you're starting to make sense of what is happening in the markets. Now, from here, we move on to what has become the popular buzzword in the markets. And candlestick charts have been around since the 1700s. They were used by rice traders a long time ago. They are a very good charting system. And I don't use them on the whole. 
I use a bar chart because when I started trading 40 years ago, we had to chart by hand. We didn't have computerized charts. So Japanese candlesticks weren't uh, were around, but they were time consuming because we were drawing all this by hand. So we used bar charts. We also didn't have colored pens and it just wasn't that popular. But with the growth of online retail trading, and especially with computerized charts and the new Java charts where you can just push a button and all of this is done for you, the Japanese candlesticks have become very, very popular. And they're very accurate. But they're part of a trading method or a trading strategy. And unless you're going to learn the entire strategy, you're going to get stuck in these reds and greens because we're human beings and our minds see lots of red and we think down or we see lots of greens and we think up. But this isn't what Japanese candlesticks are really telling you. Each one of these candlesticks not only tells a story like the bar charts, but the candlesticks aren't about how big or, or how red or how green they are. It's all about the body and the wicks and the length of this story, uh, the story that they're telling you. And then it's a relationship between the patterns between one, two or three candlesticks. And just because you see a lot of green or you see green next to red isn't necessarily telling you something's going down or something's going up. Okay. It is a understanding of what the 32 different patterns of candlesticks are. So this is one of the reasons I stay away or I tell new traders to stay away from candlesticks unless they're going to really spend some time learning them. And if you wish, then they're very good. Next month, we'll have a two-week course in candlesticks. We had it last month. And don't misunderstand me. I like candlesticks. I use them often. But I, my predominant trading method and my predominant charting method is bar charts. Because when we go look at candlesticks, you're going to find out they're virtually like bar charts because they look exactly the same. This chart doesn't look all that much different. This, both of these charts are exactly the same. Same asset, same time, same time frame. 30 minutes, Euro, US dollar, exactly all three of the charts, the line chart, the bar chart, and the candlestick were all done simultaneously. So they're all representing the same price patterns. Now, when we draw a candlestick, each one of these candlesticks also give you a lot of information. And what we do for a candlestick is at the open, we draw a line. At the close, we draw a line. We take and put a dot for the high and a dot for the low, and then we connect these to the open and the close. And now if we step up from the open to the close, that's a bullish signal. And we would color this in with the bullish color or in a green red system with the green. If we step down from the open to the close, that's a bearish color. And we would color this in with a red. So what do we have? We have open, high, low, and close. So what is it? It's really a bar with a color drawn in the center. Not much difference. And today, with our new modern charts, you can start out. I like a bar chart because they're clean and easy, and they don't put much activity on my charts. So when I'm drawing all my other lines, I can see things. And then I just can tap a little button and change it over to a candlestick chart. So I'm not saying don't use candlesticks. I'm saying understand that you can use them, but you have to learn what they're trying to tell you. So once you've set up your chart, or you understand the three kinds of charts, you have to start understanding what the time frames are. Now, in this case, we kept talking about the 30 minute time frame, because that's just what I chose for class. You have charts that go from one minute time frames all the way to a year time frame. And all the time frame is, is when each one of those lines are put on the chart. So let's go over and look at a real live chart let me pop up some charts I have open in for us, and we'll pop those up on the screen. Okay, so what we're looking at right now is a USD JPY. Let's go change it over to Euro USD. Uh, 
Okay, so we're looking at the euro US dollar and we're looking at it right now in a 30 minute chart. Okay. So we're looking at the same charts we had in the screenshots except a current chart in today's price. So we're looking at a 30 minute chart. So first thing that you have to know is each the distance from this screen to this side to that side stays the same. And if each one of these lines represents every 30 minute a 30 minute period it takes two lines to represent an hour, and therefore it would take how many lines to represent a day? 48 lines. So you can get so many lines on a chart. So if you're looking at a one day chart, you could get a, a one day uh, time frame. You could get one day all the way back to here, the same distance, so you get a lot more time. If you're looking at a, a, a 10 minute chart, or a, one, a half hour chart, you can only get so many lines in your visual screen. Now, yes, you can pull your charts back and forth and see. But remember, the price is the price. Price action doesn't change. It's when you're breaking down increments, you can see more detail. Okay. So that is the biggest difference. And your time frame should be tied to the type of trading you're doing. If you're looking to invest in Apple, to hold Apple in your portfolio to your retirement, you don't care what it just did over the last 15 minutes. You don't care what it did over the last two hours. Now, if you're getting ready to buy Apple today because you've made a decision that you want to have Apple and it's a good price point to buy Apple now to sit on for the next 10 years or the next five years, okay, you would be looking at on a daily or weekly chart. But yes, when you want to enter the market or you want to give your broker a price to buy Apple, you want to look at a, a short-term chart to say whether I would buy at 129.8 or 129.9. But, you know, it doesn't make a big difference because you plan on sitting on it for 10 years. So your time frame needs to be part of what you're trading. If you're a day trader, you need to be looking at a 15-minute time interval because you need, you're, you're looking to buy at the lowest price or the highest price at that point to get out of it in a very short period of time. So you're only looking for a couple pips of a movement. Whereas if you're a swing trader, so you're looking to invest for four, four weeks to eight weeks, you would rather be looking at, at say, a one-hour chart or a four-hour chart because you're less concerned with individual movements and pips. You're more concerned with how it's going to move because you're expecting that asset to move over the next month. The other thing about time frames is they also help you to understand a personality of an asset. So you can view at the same asset in multiple time frames and at multiple times a day. So for instance, say for instance, we determine that gold usually drops or follows the U.S. market in the Asian session. And then we can see that gold recovers usually, whether it was up or down, as the European markets open. So we can actually see this by looking at different time frames and overlaying different times and see how this personality of this asset moves. And it will help you trade it better. You can start to see things in common. You can start to understand what to expect. Then, on top of that, multiple time frames give you a better understanding of where the asset is in position, in relative position to how it trades. For instance, we're looking right now at the Euro US dollar chart, and we can see, and we're looking at a 30 minute chart, and what do we see? Well, we see initially that the Euro is trading in a downtrend. But look at this, we see, if, and if we go back a little farther, it was trading in an uptrend. And if we go back to the beginning of what we're looking at, we would misconsume and we would say the euro is trading in an overall uptrend or it's got a recovery down here and it's just about the 50% mark. So you might be expecting it to bounce back up. But the fact is, if you looked at the euro in a longer term chart, you might get a little bit better story and a better understanding of where the euro is standing. So if we go back and flip this over to a one hour chart, we see a cut a different story of the euro. We don't see it in a downtrend at all. Actually, we see it over the last month or since the beginning of the month in an uptrend. But 
But that's still a little bit misconceiving because we go move it back into a one day chart. What do we see? We see over the last year, the euro has been in a steady downtrend. We see the euro is way below its trading range and it's been falling steadily. So now we're getting a better understanding of where, what the story is with the euro. We go back to a one month chart and all of one month charts lets us see visually. So now we're seeing on this chart back to 1995. So we can see where the euro was trading now over the last couple of years, over the last well, 10 years, 20 years. The euro is just about where it was in 1997. So if we go back to a one week chart, we can see again that the euro has been falling steadily. So what do we have is we can say that we might have a short term uptrend in a longer term downtrend. So it gives us a better understanding of how this asset is moving in relative value or relativity to where it normally would trade or what we can expect. Because if it's at the lowest point in its trading history, we even though we see it coming going down, we can say, ah, it's down where it's never traded before. We don't expect to go lower. Let's go take a look at the pound real quickly. So again, we can see in the pound, we have a short-term uptrend. We see it drop down the other day. We see it in a longer-term downtrend. But where is this in relativity, relative to how the pound normally trades? Well, if we go back and change this from a one-hour chart over to a one-day chart, what do we see? We see a huge decline here. And we know what that was. That was a Brexit vote. And then we see the pound is still on a steady decline and it's down at 121.51, which is very low. But if we go back and look at it in a one month chart, what do we see? We see the pound is trading at the lowest price it has been since 2000. So that is telling us right now that pound is sitting outside of this one low point right here that it hit when we had um, when we had some problems with the uh, well, we're having the problems with the Scots, and because remember it's, we're looking at it against the dollar, and this is like you know a couple of weeks ago when the dollar gained a lot of momentum, and the dollar has been very very strong, but the pound is trading ultimately at the lowest point it has been as far back as we can see on this chart. So we're saying in the last 17 years. So that's telling you a better story about the pound. If we were to go back and drop this down, uh, we can't get any farther than a one month on this chart because these are free charts. So, but now we're getting to understand where the price action is holding. Now we're looking at a candlestick chart. I told you today, all you have to do is drop down here. You find something to give you your charting, your change of your chart patterns. And we could just go over here and click on line chart. And again, see the line chart, again, tells us a bare story, but it doesn't tell us anywhere near those candlesticks. And then we can go drop onto our bar chart. And we see relatively the same as we saw on the candlesticks, okay. except it doesn't have the colors. It's all... To me, it's a little bit clearer because I'm not getting misled by reds and greens. But today, our new, you know, the, the, the new Java and HTML chart allow you to do this in a, in a second, you know, a blink of an eye. Now, when you look at your chart, so now we have the three different types of charts. We have a line chart, a bar chart, and a candlestick chart. Now, before you all ask me, there are lots of other types of charts. As you see right here, we have hollow candles. We have the Hel Hel Helkin, the Helkin Ashley. We have line charts, area charts, Renko. We have line breaks. We have KE. We have point and figure. All these are simply variations of the three basic times of charts. Like, for instance, the area chart is simply a line chart with the bottom shaded in. 
hollow candles are simply a candlestick chart with the candles hollowed out in the, the bullish. So, okay. They're all variations of the same thing. So we have the three basic types of candles, the three basic types of charts. Okay. And let's change this back to our regular candles or bar chart. Now let's go back to my PowerPoint. So we have our three types of charts. We have our time frames. Most charts, a one-minute chart is very, very detailed. It's very hard to do anything with. It's very hard to even trade from. It's very hard to see any detail because it gets, there's so much action on this one chart, as you can see. But if you're trading in very small time segments, it can give you some information. Okay. The nice thing about a bar chart, which you can see on here is, as the price is moving up and down, you can see that this price where the price is sitting right now at 121.50 is a very strategical price. You see all of these opens and closes that have the solid bars right on that price line. So we know that this level right here is going to be strategically important to that price. Okay. But let's go back and let's use, most people use 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour and four hour charts. Okay. But you pick what fits your need and you can change them back and forth. So we have time frame, chart style. Now, all the charts that are out there will give you some way, and, and they're all slightly different, but you can find all your indicators somewhere under a place that gives you indicators. You can also find all your tools on the side. Eat, like I said, every charting service is slightly different, but they're all available to you. Okay, what we're looking at tonight are charts from tradingview.com. Now, I have a subscription with them, so I can see a little bit more detail, but they're free if you want them. All you do is go put in your user, you know, set up a username and password, and there's no charge for them. They're absolutely free. The biggest difference between free charts and charts you pay for are the feeds. The feeds from the services that feed the data in from the, the indices and in the, in the, uh, the feed provider are very, 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 very expensive. And all the data that has to be stored is cumbersome and, and very heavy and very expensive. So your free charts usually have a slight delay because a lot of the services providers, if they're giving you historical data, don't charge it. They only charge you for the new data. So if you if you allow a one minute delay, a lot of the feeds are free or they're less expensive. So most of the free services are just, they're not distorting price, they're not deceiving you, they're not doing anything to you. The feeds are just slower. They're feeding the same prices, but what you're seeing on your charts are, are just coming up a little bit later. Okay. Where if you're paying for charts or using charts on a broker site, that are providing you, especially off the MT4, you're getting the fastest feeds. But that's with everything out there. I mean, if you're getting the free economics calendars, you know, the data's not delayed. There's nobody pushing a button and delaying it to you and saying, ah, Billy Smith over there is going to get it five minutes, or you get it from, okay. It's the refresh and the speed in which it's transmitted. And when they're sending out that data, who gets it? And is it coming direct? from the feed provider or is it coming through a second or third party provider, you know, that gets the feed in and feeds it back out. So all of this only makes a difference if you're trading in little pips, okay, little increments of time. So if you're day trading, this can make, a, especially in Forex, this can make a big difference. So you need to understand what your charting service and how fast, and nobody deceives you. It, believe me, there's no deception. This your charting service, you can find out exactly how fast the refresh rate is, how fast the data is fed out, and how, uh, because it's really based on the pay price you're paying. Okay. But just be aware of that when you're looking at, especially free charts like investing.com or some, some of the other places, or even the trading view charts, if you look at your chart that you're getting free and my chart that I'm paying for, you'll see a slight, my chart will get the next dot on there a little bit faster than you because the feeds come out. So you should be aware of what the difference is in when you're getting free charts or paid charts. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. And let's talk a little bit more about what charts and why you want to use these charts. So hold on a second. Let me bring my PowerPoint back up here. Okay. 
So now we've looked at the time frames. Now, if you're a day trader, you want to be looking at, like I said, small time frames. If you're a swing trader, you want to look at a little bit more long, short or longer time frame. If you're a investor, you want to look at more time frames. But regardless of which type of trading you're doing, you need to understand what an asset is doing, where the asset stands in relationship to its previous movement. And you're only going to do this by switching the time frames. So Forex trading attracts many different types of traders with as many different types of systems. If you want to trade a currency pair, it's best to become as familiar with it as possible. Viewing a currency pair in multiple time frames is part of the process of learning its personality. Understanding the currency pair's personality can help you in your success with trading it. Now, one of the best reasons to learn how to read a chart properly is so that you can apply technical analysis. Now, the backbone of technical analysis is patterns on a chart. So whether you want to learn what RSI is or learn how what Bollinger Bands are, you want to learn what stochastics are, or you see all this technical analysis websites that give you what RSI is calculated at now, all of this means nothing when it's not dropped on a chart and tied directly back to price action. So not every trader believes in using technical analysis, but it can be useful even if it's not your primary method of trading. Technical analysis relies on the price that is on the chart you are using. Now, the more information, if you think of a chart as your roadmap, now, yes, today most people don't use more roadmaps. We have waves on our cell phones, we have Google Maps, and we have GPS in our cars. So nobody uses roadmaps anymore. But if you think of a, a line chart as your bare basic map, you know, you're going to a wedding and you get an invitation to mail, and on the back of the reception card, they have a little line chart, but it really gets you off the highway and into their location and where the parking lot is and where you should be parking and it just is some lines it gives you some bare general information but it helps you get to where you got to go at the end the more information you put on these charts or on this roadmap the more accurate your tra your transport's going to be the less you're going to get lost or confused or if there's a an accident or a, a or um you know freeway works you know, uh, maintenance work, and you need to get off or you know, the highway and find another way to get there, you'll have it on your map because the more detail you have, the more likely you are to find an alternative or see problems. A map might help you also understand what to do during rush hour, you know, which route would be better for me to take. Okay. And so the more information you're able to put on this road map, the easier your journey will be and the less stress you'll have and the more likely you'll arrive successfully. So if you look at the background here, we have the map of the London and surrounding areas from the airport. And here we go. And here's a map of natural gas. And it kind of looks exactly the same. A whole bunch of lines going all over the place. But if you know how to use them properly and your eyes are used to using them, you'll be able to interpret them. Here, perhaps here, I mean, it looks more like a map than it does anything else to me. Now, once we have our chart set up, and once we have our time frame that we want to look at, and we have the type of chart, we can then start putting on the bare basics. And even though we call this a whole science of technical analysis, whether you're trading from technical analysis or you're trading from fundamental analysis, you're trading using your gut or you're trading using speeches or you're trading using what the central banks can say or what Mario Draghi can do or economics data, you still can't trade blindly. So being able to read a bare basic chart, forget all the RSI and stochastics and MACD and the chart patterns and the triangles and the pennants and the flags, forget all that. You want to understand where an asset is trading at the moment. You can look at a price on, on some system, 
you know, on some website, or you can quickly look at a chart. If you only look at it to tell you the story of today, that's fine. But if you can take that chart and see a story on it and you can move it over, not put any other information on it, and then start dropping some bare basic information like not only what road you what direction you're going to your meeting, but what highway you're gonna get and where what when you get off that highway, what you're gonna turn you know, what you're gonna do off that exit. Okay. You might have some bare basic information, but it gets you getting in the right direction. And so the first thing we want to learn to put on a chart is trend lines. If we can combine reading a chart uh, interpreting a trend line on a chart or where price trends are, a little bit of support and resistance. And those are the prices around the current price where markets tend to hem and haw. And we can drop on volume, which is the amount of contracts or say how much to, how heavy the traffic is. We might be able to start getting ourselves somewhere without getting lost. So the first line that anybody needs to learn to put on a chart is a trend line. And a trend line is fairly simple. It's a very important line that you place on your chart. It is very, it, it's a very crucial line. And too many traders, when they start out using a chart, they, ah, well, I can drop a line on anywhere and draw it, and it's going to tell me something. Well, that's not the truth, because what a chart does, it starts interpreting price action. And if you think about price movement and trading, it's all about the psychology of the markets. It's about understanding what a million people around the world are going to do and what price will be important to those million people. How can you, sitting at your house at your computer, understand where price is moving and what price should be significant to the market? At what price should I put my stop loss? What, what price? Point should I or what price should I take my exit point or where I should take my profit? Okay, how do I know when I want to enter the markets? How do I know when price is moving up? Say we have the Federal Reserve meeting this week. Say we know Yellen, everybody is sure it's a hundred percent actually today in the news that they're going to raise rates this week. Okay. Well, that's going to send the dollar up. How far is going to send the dollar up? We don't know because the dollar has been. Positioning itself, gold today was trading at the lowest level it's been in months. The dollar's moving up. But how do we know how far the dollar should move or how can we determine if we want to enter it, how, where we should get out or where we could judge if the market's got the momentum to keep pushing it up? Well, this is all going to be based on the psychology or the reaction of the masses around the world. And a trend line is the first line we can put on a chart that helps us understand what price we should see an action or reaction in the markets. So a trend line is a very important line, and it's got rules about it. And this is what this, everybody says, oh, I can put a line on a chart. <coughs> but trend lines are one of the most basic concepts of day trading or long-term investing. And they're also one of the most powerful concepts. Trend lines have been used for trading as long as there have been markets, and they are well suited for any type of markets. Trend lines are based on the idea that markets move in trends, sustain movement in one direction, and then sustain movement in the opposite. Trend lines show the general direction of price movement, the strength of the current price movement, and where support and resistance are located. They give you pieces of information. Trend lines show three distinct but related pieces of information about the market. They show the direction of the current price movement. So in other words, if the euro is moving up or the dollar is moving up and gold's moving down, you see gold moving down steadily, what is it? It's trending down. You need to understand that where it is going. Not just it just fell over the last 15 minutes. Is it going down? Is it going up? Okay. Is it recovering or is it just a correction or a rebound? So we have to understand and get these trends on correctly. Okay. Then it shows the strength of the price movement. The strength is based on how steep that trend line is. If the traders are pushing that really hard and you have a very steep trend line, you know you have strength in that price movement. 
and it also shows you future support and resistance. If we draw that trend line, a valid trend line out into the future, we should be able to predict as the price moves up where the when price touches a specific that trend line, what we can expect to happen. Now these three pieces of information can be used independently of each other or they can be used together in the part of a larger trading system. It's up for you to decide what you want to do with them. But trend lines are straight lines that are drawn on a graphical price or indicator chart. Now, it is possible to draw trend lines between any two points on a chart, and they often look pretty good. That's what new traders say. In fact, one of the issues I've had working with newer traders is that they always say, I drew this line and I like it. I can draw a line, any line I want. Yes, of course you can, but the question is, how do you draw a trend line that is meaningful and that will respect the volatility and the integrity of wherever the trend might be in effect. That's what's important. A trend line is not a customized line that is yours. You're not trying to outsmart the markets. You're trying to put a trend line on a line on a chart that tells you what price or the same line that everybody around the world is, whether you're in Russia and you're speaking Russian, whether you're in the U.S. and speaking, you know, speaking English, or whether you're in Spain and you're speaking Spanish, you're all looking at the same price chart. You want to have the same trend line on that everybody does because then you can start predicting what price or when price does a certain thing, what action you could expect. We don't know when it touches that trend line, whether it's going to bounce off or break below it, but we can say that 121.51 is a crucial price moving up and when it comes down and touches that price on that trend line we're going to expect some pr action okay understanding that at that price we should get some action puts you ahead of the marketplace now the action could be down or it could be up it could be a bounce off of it or bounce through it break through it we don't know that but now you know at that price we should expect some reaction but if you draw your line on differently than everybody else and your, your line tells you at 120.50, you're expecting a price. Like you're sitting there at 121.51, you know, playing with your thumbs while everybody else is reacting. And you're waiting for a price action at that at a different, wrong price. So a standard uptrend lines are drawn between higher lows in an uptrend. And a standard downtrend line is a line drawn between lower highs in a downtrend. Okay. Now. Trend lines have rules to them. Okay. And in order to draw them on correctly, you have to know how to apply these rules. And we have a one hour class called The Trend is Your Friend. And in that class, we'll start you on the right way of drawing these trend lines on a chart and then being able to apply them properly. Because you see, a trader would like to draw this trend line because it works well with price okay. and then they're expecting some type of action here and some type of action here but they've ignored a lot of the rules and they've ignored all this and that's not a correct trend line you have to get them on correctly because the correct way would have been draw to draw it here so it's not broken so when you're expecting this movement or price action at this price movement and you don't get any, what happens? It's because all the rest of the market was looking at this. And they're also seeing the trend line hasn't validated yet because it doesn't have three points. So you were wrong and the, or you were drew what you thought was right, but you drew it incorrectly. So you were predicting price action at the wrong prices. So it's important to learn how to draw these on. Because you have to learn how, and you have to learn what a, a valid trend line is. So therefore, if you join us for the class, The Trend is Your Friend, we'll teach you in great detail how to get these on correctly so that you can start building your basics of a trading system and can start moving over into technical analysis. So I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being part of the ETX family. And we'll see you in a class. I don't know what the other schedule is, but we have the trend is your friend coming up. We also have a support a class on support and resistance. 
And these things are, these points are crucial. Support and resistance and trend lines can then help you also determine where to put your entry points, where to put your exit points, where to set your targets, when to enter the market. All these can help you determine these critical decisions you have to make before you enter a trade or while you are trading. And at least they'll stop you from making larger mistakes. They might point something out to you. So thank you very much, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Have a good day now, and thank you for being part of the ETX family. Bye now.